Many of you have just started to get your feet wet in running your own servers in networks in your home. Perhaps it's just a Raspberry Pi running a Linux server or a NAS server, or maybe it's much more complex than that. This is a great thing. I can't express how valuable starting a home lab was for me, being able to break things, getting my hands dirty, and you just learn so much from it. But wherever you're at, you will eventually reach the point where you want to access your private network outside of your home. You planned to keep it private forever and just use your apps and services at home, but there will come a day where you want to access those remotely, or you want to allow family to access it in some capacity. There's no way around it. And when this happens, you'll make one of these three choices. Number one, you'll open up a port to the public web or you'll create an A record pointing to your home IP, not thinking much of it, and you'll soon find out. Number two, you're a bit wiser and you plan out the proper security. You create a good inventory, configure a firewall, maybe a VPN gateway, reverse proxy, whatever, and you brave the potential intrusion with tact. Good for you. Or number three, you set up a solid remote access solution that does not require you to open any ports or IPs to the public. You remain completely private and you're still able to access your services. You can have your cake and eat it too. In this video, I wanna show you how to do just that. Keep everything private, no inbound anything, period, and a free remote access solution called TwinGate that allows you to keep it that way. Let's get started. So your first question I know is how is that even possible? Well, TwinGate establishes outbound only connections from your network to TwinGate's cloud infrastructure. These outbound connections create a secure tunnel without requiring any inbound connections to your network. So no port forwarding needed or inbound rules that could potentially be exploited. We'll elaborate on this further as we set things up. So the first thing we need to do here is to deploy TwinGate's connector into our private network. And TwinGate gives us flexibility with how we do this, but I have this old Raspberry Pi 3 that I'm no longer using, and I'm gonna dedicate it to running this connector in my home network. Feel free to use something else, but if you do go the Raspberry Pi route, then follow along as I need to actually set this up first. So take your SD card from your Raspberry Pi, it's this little tiny card here, and put it into your computer. And then open up the Raspberry Pi Imager. So choose your device. I have a Raspberry Pi 3. For operating system, I'm just gonna go with Raspberry Pi OS, so I'll choose Other, and choose Raspberry Pi OS Lite, so I don't need a graphical user interface. And then Storage, I'll choose that SD card that I just pulled out of my Raspberry Pi. And then click Next, and it'll ask, will we like to apply OS customization settings? Yes, click Edit Settings. I'm gonna call this connector.local. I have my username and password, my wireless LAN set up, so the name of your wireless network and password. That way I can access your Wi-Fi once you plug it in. Your locale settings, and then most importantly, make sure you enable SSH and add your public key. Click Save, and then Yes, and it says all your existing data is gonna get erased, that's fine and authorize it to do that. So this is gonna install the OS onto this SD card so that we can plug it into our Raspberry Pi, plug it in the wall, and run it as a server in our home lab. Once that's done, click continue. It already ejected. So I'm gonna pull the card out, put it back into my Raspberry Pi, and of course you wanna make sure that it goes in your closet where all the flashy lights are. Give it a minute or two to boot up and then open up your terminal. And then because you set connector as your host name, you can do SSH and then the user that you set, I set that as pi at connector.local. You can also use your IP address to SSH into this server. So I'm gonna hit that. Are you sure you wanna continue? Yes. And we're in. Next, I wanna make sure this pi doesn't change IPs on me when it reboots. So let's set up a static IP. It's really easy. And you can look up how to do this anywhere, but basically you just need to configure a few things. So if you go to your terminal and type in IP ADDR show, we're gonna find out the IP address. So we're using wireless. It's gonna be WLAN zero, yours may be different. And then the IP address, which is 192.168.1.100 slash 24. So let's grab that. And what we're gonna do is start with interface. Interface is WLAN zero, as we see here. The static IP address we want is what it currently is, which is 192.168.1.100 slash 24. Yours is gonna be different. And then whatever IP your router has. So you can find this in your router information. Mine is 192.168.1.1. And then static domain name servers. If I go back to my terminal, I can do a cat etsyresolve.conf. And I'll see here that my name server is 192.168.1.1. .1 .1. 
So again, get your current IP address, set that with its range as your static IP address, set your interface, check out your router IP, and then get your DNS server. And if you have any trouble with this, just Google it, it's all over the web. So once you've done that, copy this, and we'll do a sudo vi, and the file you want to add this to is slash etsy slash dhcpcd, dhcpcd.conf. Hit return, and paste that in, save it, and you're all set. And you can even do a sudo reboot now, just to check that your IP address doesn't change. And we can do a hostname dash capital I, and we see that the IP address is the same. Good. So if you went the Raspberry Pi route, you're all set. Otherwise, you can join me here. So what we'll do is we'll deploy this twin gate connector into our home network so that we can access the resources within it. So the very first thing we want to do is sign up for a twin gate account. Just go to twingate.com and click on try twin gate for free. And go ahead and set up your own local network if you haven't already. If you already have one, you can skip this step. But once you're in, you'll need to first create a remote network within Twingate, which is like a bucket for your resources. So if you go up here to remote networks, click the plus, I'll create one called home network. I'm going to make this on premise and home network. And this is going to be again, a bucket for all of my home network services and apps and whatever. So click add remote network. And when you create a remote network, so I'm going to click on that home network. Twingate will go ahead and prepare two connectors for you. There are two here for high availability and load balancing reasons, but I'll just need one for my home network, so I'll delete the other. So let's delete one of these. And I'll just have this one. And if I click on that connector, we get instructions with how to deploy it. It's very easy. So select a deployment method. I'm gonna use uh, just Linux. You can go Docker, Helm, pick a cloud solution, Terraform, whatever. But I'm going to go with Linux. And then we need to generate tokens. So click Generate Tokens, which always asks you to authenticate. Here are my tokens. You can further customize your Linux command. But step four gives you the command with the token in it for you to install. So here's my token. I just need to copy the command, open up my SSH connection to my Raspberry Pi, and deploy it. Enter. This will take just a few seconds. Now that that's done, let's go back to the admin panel and we should be green. There we go. We're green. Status is connected. It's that easy. And now that this connector is connected, the controller, which is the admin panel we've been using, responds with a connector ACL, which includes the configurations we've set in the admin panel. Now let's take a really quick detour and see how this works in the big picture. So we've discussed our controller, which is essentially our admin panel. We've discussed our connector, which we've deployed behind our private network. Our client over here is the software component that we download on our phone or our laptop that is a combined authentication and authorization proxy for user requests for private resources. So I actually log into that and can access my resources from here. We'll see that in a minute. And then finally, there's this relay in a peer-to-peer -peer connection. What's going on here? So the client and the connector establish authenticated outbound connections to a relay. These are secure connections initiated from inside each network going outward. The client and connector exchange their IP addresses in port combinations, send packets to each other's IP addresses, which then allows this peer-to-peer -peer connection without having to open any inbound ports. There's a great article on the Twingate docs on NAT traversal and ultimately how this all happens. I'll be sure to link it below. Give it a read. And this peer-to-peer -peer connection that is established provides very low latency, which makes Twingate so fast. So while it's great for your home lab, it's also great for big enterprise solutions. Okay, enough of all that. So we have this connector behind our private network, but it has no access to anything. We have to define that. And we do that in the admin panel under resources. So click on resources. And there are really two ways you could do this here. You could define the IP range of your entire home network and be able to access it all, or you could define it on a resource by resource basis. And of course, in either of these situations, you can further refine that access. But let's start with broad access to the entire network. So let's create a resource. So click plus and let's call it everything. And we'll put the entire range of my home network, which is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And who will be able to access this resource? Well, since this is the entire network, let's just allow people in the admin group to access. 
That doesn't exist yet. So let's actually go out of this, go to team groups, click the plus and admins. I'm gonna add that group. Then let's go back to network resources and add again, everything. My address of my entire network, click create resource. Oops, I need to select a remote network, which is home network. Click create resource. And we'll grant this to admins only. Now let's say that we're out and about away from our home network and we need to make a change to our pie hole config. First, I'll need to download the client, which you can do on this page. Open that up and sign in to connect. And if we look at this, I have access to no resources. Why is that? Well, because I didn't put myself in the admin group. So I need to go to team, click on my user and under groups, add to the group admins. And immediately I see this here on my phone in the TwinGate app. And because we're logged in, we're authenticated and all of that, I should be able now to access whatever in my home network. So let's open up Safari and let's try 192.168.1.86, which is my pie hole slash admin. And you'll note up here, I'm not on my home network. And there's pie hole. So I can log in here, I can make my changes, but you'll note if I go back to TwinGate and disconnect, and I go back and try to refresh that page and it'll eventually time out, it's still loading. But since I disconnected from TwinGate, I'm no longer able to access those resources. But this is pretty broad, works for some people and for some situations, but you may want to define the particular resource and define who can access what and give it an easier name to remember than an IP address. So let's delete the everything resource and define our resources individually. And here's where you can create an inventory. You can put some strategy behind this. You can invite other users, put them in proper groups and then set up policies. But let's go ahead and delete the everything. And let's add these resources individually. Remember the connector is in our environment and we can add resources and configure everything as needed here in the admin panel. So let's select a remote network. That's gonna be home network. And I can do pie hole again, but let's try Karakeep which used to be Hoarder, if you're familiar with that. It's just an application where you can clip articles to read later, that kind of thing. So let's call this Karakeep. Address is gonna be 192.168.1.111. And as an alias, let's just call it clips.home because we're clipping articles. I'll choose create resource. And I'll just say everyone, everyone can access this. Grant access. And now while the connector is in our environment, we only have access to Karakeep and only those people in the everyone group, which is everyone. And let's try to access this one on my computer. And let me go ahead and connect to my hotspot so that I'm not on my home network. So we can make sure this works properly. All right, so you see I'm connected to my iPhone, not my home network. And I've already downloaded the TwinGate client. So up here, I'll go to log into TwinGate and sign in with Google. And now that I'm signed in, I should see Karakeep here under resources and I can select open in browser and you'll see clips.home, that's my alias. And for this to work, I need to put the port on the end, so colon 3000. And there we go. Now I can log in and access my clips or add new clips, whatever. Now, if I come up here and disconnect from TwinGate, again, just to test this out, it shouldn't work, so refresh and clips.home doesn't work. I can also go to the IP address and it'll work, but adding an alias like that makes things a little bit more manageable. So what TwinGate ultimately does is it allows you to keep your private network completely private while also allowing remote access to your resources without having to open up anything to the vicious public web. It's a win-win. If you have any questions, as always, ask them below or jump in our active subreddit and ask them there. Link will be below in the description. Thanks for watching.